well. I'd like to be able to get this to work on my mic. I don't I'm trying to figure out how to do that, but uh, I'm not a technological wizard here. So um, I wanted to cover today some uh, topics that have been coming up on some of these news feeds, such as, uh, and I am driving right now, so just bear with me, such as um, what trucks to buy when you're doing a, being an owner-operator, first-time owner-operator trucks. Um, really, you're going to hear many different opinions. And before somebody goes off on this video and goes, oh, well, that's not my opinion, you're wrong, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, this is my opinion and based off my experiences, okay? I am not a Freightliner person. Um, Freightliner used to make a great truck back when they were using the Series 60 engine. I do not like DD15s or 16s or whatever DD number they're on now. Um, as far as ride quality goes, you cannot be a peak. Whether it be a long nose or a 579, you can't be a peak. Beat a peak. And uh, I say that three times fast. Um, I've had Kenworth. I've ridden in Volvo. Volvos are really nice too. Here's the problem with buying a Volvo. And really they're all the same to tell you the truth. Anytime you have a brand name like Volvo or Peterbilt or Kenworth, you go to get an OEM part, it's super expensive. Um, as far as reliability goes, Volvo motors are actually pretty good, except for they're highly underpowered. Like, I have just noticed Volvo motors being very underpowered motors. Um, Cummins is great, but the new Cummins and the old Cummins both have injector issues. Um, and more specifically, injector cup issues. Um, I'm trying out this M uh, MX-13 Packard motor. It's my first Packard motor so far. I love it, although I'm only... 17,000 miles into it, so it better not give me an issue, um, but so far, I'm loving the Packard motor. Um, I do plan to get my fuel filters changed, every oil change, and I'm doing my oil changes about every 25,000 miles. Um, I know the, the, the chart says, oh, you can go 50,000 miles. If you like your engine and you want to stay trouble-free, do it at 25. Um, <coughs> I am more of a Peterbilt Kenworth person. Um, because we are a team, you, you know, want to maximize space. And uh, I find that the 579 was best for us. Now, for you solo people out there, your Kenworth might be great for you. You know, the T680's got a, I think it's a 74 inch sleeper, whereas the 579 had an 80 inch sleeper, that extra space for two people and a 68 pound dog. It makes a huge difference. Huge difference. Um, but the Kenworth T680 is a nice truck as well. Um, they both ride similar, although with our wheelbase being a little bit longer on this because we have the APU, I find that the ride quality compared to my old T700 is just night and day. Okay. Um, and. Uh, as far as you know, comfort inside the truck features um, the 579 um, <clears throat> fit us best. Now that is to say, if you're a solo, you can get whatever you want. My main focus is if you're going to be an owner operator or at least our, our uh, own authority, even you, there's a couple things you want to have. A, you want to make sure your credit's on the up and up. There is a, such a thing called truck credit. If you go to try to buy a truck. And you don't have truck credit, but you have great personal credit, you can still get a truck, you just get a higher interest rate. If you have bad credit, they, they are going to break you over the coals on an interest rate and demand a very high uh, deposit, like money down. Very high down, okay? Um, and if you're, uh, if you have good credit, but no truck credit, um, You'll still have money down, but it won't be as high, and you'll get slightly better interest rate. Also, another thing you want to have, um, you want to have at least $10,000 in the bank after that to start your business and to run it for at least a couple months. Um, <clears throat> just because it's always good to have a maintenance fund, especially if you're buying a used truck. Now, typically in our used truck, it used about four to five grand a month in maintenance, which absolutely blew it. We spent 200 grand in three years trying to keep that thing afloat. At some point, you gotta just, and we should.
should have done it a long time ago, but I'm stubborn. We should have just said, you know, hey, uh, that's it, I'm done. Unfortunately, we did not, but that's my mistake. Um, like I said, I do make mistakes in this business. I'm not perfect. I'm just trying to keep others from following my mistake. Uh, some people will say, yeah, you want to get a used truck so you can pay it off sooner. Sure, you can get a used truck. But if you're going to do a used truck, keep in mind, there's going to be a lot more maintenance that needs to go into that new truck or that used truck. Um, you don't have any warranties, stuff like that. So, you know, now you're looking at emissions stuff. Now you're looking at, if you don't get one with emissions, then you're looking at actions or transmissions or engine stuff. Uh, hoses, uh, water pumps, oil pumps, turbos. You know, the average price of a turbo is about three to five grand, depending on the turbo, okay? That's my lane mitigation. Um, and so you want to be prepared for that. Uh, a very wise man that I used to work with told me one day that most owner-operators are one breakdown away from bank bankruptcy. That's true. I've seen so many go down with a critical engine failure that they don't have the money to fix and because they weren't prepared. Uh, which brings me to my next point. If you're going to be an owner-operator, you need to save money. I see this too many times. People start making all this money and they don't put any away. They just they, It burns a hole in their pocket. They go to the chrome shop. They spend it. They do whatever they need to, right? <clears throat> next thing you know, taxes come. Oh, you owe $11,000 in taxes. Oh, crap, where am I going to get that? Uh, or, oh, hey, you need $8,000 in maintenance on your truck. Oh, crap, where am I going to get that? I spent all my money. That's I see it all the time. It's all too common, and it's, it's, it's sad to tell you the truth, but um, this is the way people are. You need to save your money. Another reason you want to save your money, you want to pay that truck off. When you get that truck paid off, you can, the sooner you get that paid truck, that truck paid off, you have truck credit. When you have truck credit, you can go get a new truck. So now, now you, you, you base it off, well, now I have a truck payment. Yeah, you have a truck payment. Like right now, we have a truck payment. It's $2,610 a month, okay? But now you have a truck credit, you have a truck payment. But also what comes with that new truck is warranties. Something goes wrong, hey, I'm not having to come out of pocket. Sure, I lose the time it takes to fix it, but it, the, the fix is free. Um, so you have warranties, you have all kind. Of, you know, the truck's going to be more reliable because it's brand new. Um, on top of that, you know, it's not um, how you say uh, rattling all over the place. It's a lot smoother ride. It's not all worn out. Um, and our last truck, you know, it went, went 1.35 million miles before it finally peered out. Ah, no pun intended. Um, Freightliners. Now, Freightliners to me are a fleet truck. They're good for 300,000 miles. Now, I know there's going to be someone on here that goes, oh, I've had mine a million miles, you know. I, yeah, you can get them a million miles. If I put $20,000 into a Prius, I can make it a monster truck. You know, I'm just saying, you throw enough money at something, you can get it to what you need to, to get it to. However, um, after 300000 you will notice the cabinet shake. Everything starts rattling inside. That's why they, they've earned themselves the name Freight Shakers. Um, like I said, I am not a Freightliner fan. Um, are they a workhorse for the first 300 miles? Absolutely. Sure, they'd be great. But I would never, ever own one long time. And I've driven just about every truck there is except for a long nose. Well, actually, no, that's not right. I have driven a long nose. I did a day cab long nose and I hated it. Um, I might be the only trucker you meet that does not like long nose. For one, I'm about fuel efficiency and they don't have it. And for two, I just like being able to see over my hood. Um, yeah, the only thing I haven't driven really is a Mac. Um, I've driven Volvos, Internationals, Peterbilt's, Kenworth's, uh, Sterling's, Ford's. I mean, I've, I've driven a lot of different ones. I have never driven a Mac. Um, Volvo would be, if you could get a Volvo as a Solo with a Cummins engine, it'd probably be way better. But just, just be on the lookout. If you're shopping for a used truck, make sure the person has all the maintenance records. You want to know exactly what's been done to that. Uh, 
person that doesn't have the maintenance records probably has not taken very good care of that truck, and you're going to pay the price on that one. So just be on the lookout for that one. Uh, let me show you my current view right now. I'm just going down the road. Um, but other than that, that's what I wanted to cover today in today's video. It's just, if you're doing a used truck, keep in mind that you're going to need a lot of maintenance on that truck. Um, and go into it with that attitude. If you do that, you will be successful. Even with a used truck, you can get that used truck to get you to a new truck. Um, some people don't have the credit or whatever to buy a new truck, and I totally understand that. Frankly, it's a pain in the ass, and the requirements and, and, and restrictions they put on you uh, trying to get a new truck is, is absolutely insane. Um, luckily, my wife is a financial genius and has uh, saved and saved and saved and, and built our credit and this and that, so... Um, it wasn't me. I, I promise you it wasn't me. I'm, I'm horrible with money. I'm, I'm one of those people. I mean, I'm learning, but I'm one of those people that, you know, oh, I want toys. I want a four-wheeler. I want the new Bronco. I want a new Jeep. I want this. You know, I'm, I'm one of those people. It, it sucks, but, you know. Um, anyway, um, that's what I wanted to talk about today. And as always, shiny side up. And uh, keep it safe out there. And uh, please hit that like and subscribe button. Um, it really helps me out. I'm trying to grow this channel. Um, I really want this to be an informative channel. Uh, and I hope my information actually does help you guys um, in the future. Um, I would love to see more people <coughs> having the success that we are having. Um, for one, it helps our industry. The more successful people out there, the less people they're going to take cheap freight. Cheap freight hurts truck driving. It lets the brokers do what they want and pay what they want, and they end up making all the money and doing none of the work, okay? I would love to see a million successful truck drivers uh, out there, like more than that, but, you know, if I can make the difference in one person, cool. Now, I am in touch with some of my people out here that are that have reached out to me, and they're still in school, and they're learning, and, you uh, know, if you guys need any tips on, on, on stuff, you know, please reach out to me for that as well. I'm here to help. I'd love to see more responsible truck drivers out here. Uh, and, yeah, anyway, you, uh, you guys have yourself a safe day, and I will talk to you later.